So welcome to today's lesson. And today we are going to talk about the binomial distribution. So the binomial distribution is a discrete probability distribution. So we'll go through this. So these are our objectives. How to find the expectation, the variance. Then of course, if you know the variance, you can find the standard deviation. So you take some work examples and there'll be some trial questions with answers. So you just have to work them out and compare them with their answers. So when you talk about the binomial distribution, it is just a sequence of N Bernoulli trials. So if you remember in our previous video, we talked about the Bernoulli trial or Bernoulli experiment, and we said that it has just two outcomes. So a success and a failure, and the X takes just um, binary degree, just zero and one. So the binomial just happened to be a sequence of Bernoulli experiment with n trials, like or n Bernoulli, right? So n Bernoulli trials. So you realize that the Bernoulli was given us a um, probability of x. Then we're having um one minus p, then one minus x. So you realize that the n here that we have here in the Bernoulli it was just one. In the Bernoulli, we didn't have any combination because you know n is just one. You're going to want one combination x. And remember our s just took values that zero and one. So one combination zero is one, one combination one is also one. So that's why we just have this. So the binomial was just derived from the Bernoulli. So it's just n Bernoulli trials. So the probability distribution for our binomial is given by this as we have here so n combination x probability of x 1 minus p n minus x where you know n combination s can be written as this so the same thing as we have here where n is the number of trials then the x the number of success in each trial and the p stands for the probability of success and the q which is the same as the 1 minus p stands for the probability of failure so when you're finding for the expectation or the expected value or the mean is given by the formula n times p and the variance is given by the formula np times q but q is the same as 1 minus p so as we see here so if you know when we have the variance then we can find for the standard deviation so that one will just be the root of the variance so n times p then 1 so as we can see here so we've gone through the first three um, objectives now we want to solve question so let's take an example so we have a question here it says suppose that the probability that a man has high blood pressure is 0 0.15 suppose that we select or randomly select a sample of six men so you know we are selecting six men so that means our n here is six and here the probability that a man has high blood pressure is 0 0.15 so that means a probability of success here our p is 0 0.15 so we can compute our kill so from just reading these two lines we have our p then from our p we can get our 1 minus p and we have our n here so that means that our n is 6 and our p is 0 0.15 so our kill which is 1 minus p will be 1 minus 0 0.15 which will be 0 0.85 so we have this and the next question says that we should find the probability distribution of the random variable x representing the number of men with high blood pressure in the sample so you no know, we said with the binomial distribution our uh, um distribution is given as this right so the, the binomial trial distribution is given as this as we can see here so here we have our n to be 6 we have our x to be um x then we have our p to be 0 0.15 our x here our minus p is 0 0.85 our n is 6 and this is our x so that means this happens to be the distribution for our binomial for that particular question right so since our n is equal to 6, that means s can take value from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 6. Right? So with this question, you can find the probability at x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, 
all of them. So that happens to be the distribution for our bi um, binomial trial. So let's go to the next question. The next question is if you find the expected number of men with high blood pressure in a sample. So it's the same as the mean of X or the expectation as I said. Right, so our expectation of X is given by N times P. So our N is 6 and our P is 0 0.15. So when you find a product, we get 0 0.9 and that happens to be the result. And then the next question said, we you find the variance of X. So the variance of X is given as N times P times 1 minus P. So 6 times 0 0.15. 1 minus p here is 0 0.85. So when you find the product of these three numbers, we get 0 0.765. So this happens to be the variance. And if we are asked to find a standard deviation, we just find the square root of this that we have here. So the next question said, what is the probability that there will be exactly two men with high blood pressure? So we find the probability when our x is what? 2. So, sorry. So when our x is equal to two, that means we are going to have six combination two because it is given as n combination x, and we know our n is six, and here our x is what two. So this combination two, then zero point one five x x is two here, so that's why we can see the two here, and zero point eight five n minus x n is six, and x is two here. So this is what we have here, and when you compute this on your calculator, you end up with 0 0.1762 to four decimal places. So the next question says, what's the probability that there will be at most two men with high blood pressure? So mathematics, there is one thing which really confuses some students. That's at most and at least. So when you say at most A, it means A and everything less than what A. That's in a particular range we are considering. When we say at least A, that means A and everything above A. So this is the same as, at most the same as less than or equal to A, and at least the same as greater than or equal to A. So at most, 2 means that the probability that X is less than or equal to 2. So that means that if X is less than or equal to 2, and X takes values from 0 to 6, and that means that x here will be 0, 1, and 2. So this is the same as probability of x equals 0, probability of x equals 1, and probability of x equals 2. So <coughs> we compute them individually and we just find the sum. So you should know that what you've written here can also be represented here. So that's the summation here. So when x equals 1, that means going to put 1, 1 here, after that 2, up to 3. So whatever we have here, you can compute it individually and find a sum or you can use this so when you point this on your calculator it's very simple because other than that you have to do this separately do this separately do this separately and add it but as soon as you enter this on your calculator it's going to give you your answer straight for it and that helps you to be very to work in a smart way so this is the answer for that particular question and the next question said what is the probability that there will be at least four men with high blood pressure so Probability that at least means four or more. So in our range, we know that x takes value from zero to six, and we are talking about x being greater than or equal to four. So that means that x can take value four, five, and six. So this one's the same thing. We can find the probability individually and add them, or we can use this we have here. It's very simple because when x is equal to four. That means you're going to have 6 combination for 0 0.15 for 0 0.85, 6 minus 4, so 2. Then plus, when x is 5 here, 6 combination 5, 0 0.15 exponent 5, then 0 0.86 exponent 1. Then when n is 6, s is 6 we have that too so right now you're going to get this this and this and it's find the sum for us so when you find that probability we get 0 0.0059 that's two four decimal places so that's it with the binomial so i told you we there is a trial question here 
So I'll provide you with the answers and you have to solve it and make sure you get those answers. Or if you get otherwise, you have to prove why. Correct. If only you follow the right procedure. So this is a solution to the question. So the written assignment here says that suppose that 25% of the people in a certain population have low hemoglobin levels. The experiment is to choose five people at random from this population. Let a discrete random variable x be the number of people out of five with low hemoglobin levels. So the first one says find the probability distribution of x. The second question, find the probability that at least two people have low hemoglobin levels. The third question is find the probability that at most, at most, three people have low hemoglobin levels. The fourth question, find the expected number of people with low hemoglobin levels out of the five people. And the fifth one says, um, so the fifth question, find the variance of the number of people with low hemoglobin levels out of the five people. So that's the question and these are the answers to it. So for question one, this happens to be our probability distribution then for question 2 after solving it you should get this for question 3 you're expected to get this for question 4 you're expected to get this and for question 5 you're expected to get this so thank you very much um widow can read of a tiny student of mathematics KNST and please do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel for more videos and please like the videos if they help you thank you